Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, we're going to continue looking at the NVIDIA Shield as a Plex server. But this time, we're going to look at storing our media some other place on the network. So I've got an inexpensive Synology DS218J here, where all of our media is stored. And we're going to see if we can have the Shield pull its media over the network from the Synology, yet still transcode it and deliver it to all of our clients that might want to get access to it. And the reason why you might want to do this is because maybe you've got one of these network attached storage devices and you don't want to have another big hard drive attached to your shield. You can pull it all out of this while still using it for other things as well. And what we're going to do in this video is look at how to do all of this. Now, there are some assumptions coming into this, which is, first of all, you know how to set up your network attached storage device. If you don't know what these things are, we've got a lot of content on that that I'll link down below in the video description. And we also are going to assume you know how to set up a Plex server on your Shield. And if you don't know how to do that, we did a whole video on that last month, which will also be linked down below. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, nobody is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how to set up this network-attached storage device with our Shield Plex server. All right, so we're going to get started here. We've got the Plex server already installed on this Shield Pro. Uh, remember that you can install the Plex server on most of the NVIDIA Shields with the exception of the Cylinder Shield. That new Cylinder one does not work as a Plex server, but all of the other NVIDIA Shields do. And I also suggest that you connect up your devices via Ethernet. Uh, so we have my Synology NAS here on the Ethernet along with the Shield. And you want this because you want the best reliability and internal bandwidth. Wi-Fi might work, uh, but it may not. And I think uh, Ethernet is really the way you want to go with this to ensure maximum performance. So we're going to jump into the settings icon on my Shield. We're not going to jump into Plex just yet because we do have to connect the Shield over the network to the Synology device. And we do that by going into settings and then going over here to device preferences. And then you want to go over to storage. And if you look on here, there's a way that you can mount network storage to the shield. And if we select that option, what will happen here is it will go out on the network and see what options are available for it to connect to. And sure enough, our DS218J is here. So if I select that, it will then allow me to connect as a registered user or a guest. And I have this set up with users, so I'm going to connect as a user. And I've already created a username for this called uh, Movies, I believe. So I'm going to type in Movies as the username. And now I'm going to type in my password and click on Next here. And once I do that, it's going to connect to the Synology drive over the network. It might take a second for that to happen. And now you can see that it is attached to my shield. And if I jump in here, I can confirm that the uh, video drive where all those movies that I want to share are stored is visible to the shield and it is mounted. Uh, so we are done now in the settings screen. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is jump over to my computer and set up a library on the Plex server. And we should be able to very quickly get those movie files accessible not only to me on my computer, but also all of my Plex users. So let's jump into that now. All right, so now we are on my web browser. And if you watched my other video about how to set up the Plex server on the Shield, this will look familiar. Uh, what we're going to do here on the left-hand side is click on the little period icon and go over to Manage Library and Edit. And of course, right now, there are no movies in this library because there's nothing on the Shield. Uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, browse for a media folder after clicking on Add Folders. And what we should see here as things come together is the DS218J as one of our accessible media folders. I'm going to click on Video and click Add. And you can see it already found some media in that folder. I'm just going to get rid of the one that's on the Shield because I don't intend on ever storing any media there. I'm going to click on Save Changes now. And what will happen here after we go and do a library refresh is we should see those files start to show up here on our movie database. So let's jump into the library here. It's scanning things. And look at this. It found three movies, uh, three Blu-ray rips, actually, that are on that server. And we're soon uh, going to be able to play those 
through the network over to the shield and then off to whatever else we want to play with here. So what I'm going to do now uh, is grab my phone and connect up to this server and let's see if we can play a transcoded movie through this connection. All right, so we've got our shield here serving some media to two mobile devices. I've got a movie here playing on the phone and another movie playing on the iPad and we're transcoding both of these films from a 1080p Blu-ray down to four megabits per second at 720p to kind of replicate a remote viewing of that content. And remember, the content itself is stored on the disk station, but it is being transferred to the shield for transcoding, and that seems to be working just fine here. And then I can go over to the shield and maybe spin up another film here. Uh, this is going to play locally on the shield, but again, it's going to be drawing the data from the disk station over that network connection. It may not come up immediately because it does have to queue up over the network here, but as you can see, everything seems to be working just fine and our control panel is reporting that uh, we have uh, everything working as we would expect it to. Uh, the chart here lets us know what kind of bandwidth we're using. This is all local network traffic for the most part. Um, so it is going to consume a good amount of network bandwidth, which is why you want to be using that Ethernet connection for the best performance, uh, and all is good. And I also wanted to show you the uh, Synology's control panel, because normally if we were trying to transcode with this device, it would completely kill it. But we're taking all of that transcoding load off of the Synology and having the uh, shield do it for us. So the CPU utilization here is pretty minimal. And you can see, of course, our network is getting uh, hammered pretty good here because we are drawing a lot of Blu-ray MKV data over the network here. But everything is keeping up and we're able to have a pretty good media serving solution here with a very low cost NAS. And that is why you might want to do something like this because the NASs that can do transcoding internally cost a lot more than these lower priced ones do. Uh, so you could get this set up, use your existing shield as the server, get the hardware transcoding that you're looking for, and not break the bank to get your media serving working. You won't be able to do a lot of streams in this manner, but you can get, at least in my testing here, uh, two MKV streams going down to 720p plus a native playback, and so far so good here. It seems to be working just fine. Now the connection between the shield and the network drive will be persistent. In other words, after every reboot, power outage, or update, it will go back out and reconnect to the drive until you tell it to stop doing it. So I just rebooted this shield, and as you can see here, we still have access to the 218J and its network shares. If for some reason down the road you don't want it to connect anymore, you just go over here to disconnect and it will stop doing it. But unless you tell it otherwise, it will continually reconnect on every reboot. And I found over the years using this feature that it is very reliable. So you shouldn't have any real problems with it. The other cool thing is that when you set up this network connection, other apps on your Shield can also access files over the network drive. Not all of them like doing that, uh, but I have found a few emulators that are totally fine pulling ROMs over the network. So just experiment with what you have on your Shield and you should be able to uh, make additional use out of your network storage. And it's great if you have multiple Shields around the house and you want to play a game on one without having to move files around via USB or whatever, uh, just have this network drive deliver the files to you and you are good to go. So lots of cool things to explore with this feature. And of course, Plex works quite well with it. I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. So let me know what you'd like to see next with maybe a shield or with Plex, because I'm always looking for new ideas for this series. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters, the four guys with quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.